This is Hannah Spate. And this is Henry Reich. In this video, we're going to explain how our new conditional occupancy survey design works. Occupancy surveys are widely used in ecology to study where animals are and where they aren't in order to understand their habitat use. The method's strength is that it accounts for the fact that we might fail to detect our study species, even if it's present at the study site. However, occupancy estimates for rare species tend to be biased because we're unlikely to observe the animals at all, and as a result, the data aren't very informative. So we've developed a new conditional occupancy survey design to improve occupancy estimates for rare species. Before we explain our new design, and we'll start with an example of a standard occupancy survey for the rare little brown bird, which is only found at about 10% of sites, and which we only see about 50% of the time, even when it's there. Let's suppose we do 24 total surveys. Then the standard design has us visiting 8 sites and surveying each one 3 times. On average, only one of these sites will be occupied, and we'll detect that bird on one or two of our three surveys of the site. Most of our effort was spent visiting unoccupied sites, with only three total visits to occupied sites. Alternatively, the conditional design approach to studying the little brown bird recognizes that for rare species, it's more important to spend effort on sites where we know the species is present. So we would use our 24 surveys to visit 19 sites just once, and then conduct an additional five surveys at the sites where we encountered a little brown bird on the first survey, only one in this case. For the same amount of total effort, we would end up conducting more surveys at sites that are occupied, seven to be precise. By spending more effort at occupied sites, especially those known to be occupied, the conditional design provides more data to estimate the probability that we missed seeing the bird at occupied sites, and thus generates more accurate estimates of how prevalent the bird actually is. The conditional design doesn't work very well for really common species such as the big blue bird since it wastes too much effort resurveying sites where we already know the bird is. For common species, it's more important to figure out where the species isn't, which is the domain of the removal survey design. For big blue birds, a removal design would have us survey nine sites until either the bird is detected or we've completed eight surveys, whichever happens first. By distributing more effort to sites without detections, removal designs reduce the chance that we misclassify occupied sites as unoccupied, providing more accurate estimates of where the species isn't, and thus where it is. Designing an occupancy study is, of course, much more complicated than the simple examples we've used. The probabilities that an individual is present or that you'll detect it probably won't be constant across all sites. The cost of initial and replicate visits may not be equal. You may be conducting a multi-species study with a mix of rare and common species. You may not actually know whether your study species is rare or common. And you should definitely be working with more than 24 total visits to sites. We address all these issues and provide recommendations for implementing and analyzing conditional design studies in our paper, which is linked at the top of the video description. Good luck counting animals. And thanks for watching.